Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. So we're out in the cornfield here just north of Chatham. I'm with our local crop specialist Mike Venema from our Chatham location. And we're in a cornfield just north of town here. And uh, there's a lot of things going on in this cornfield. Um, these are the symptoms uh, that uh, the crop specialist gets a phone call on. The corn's yellow, it's not doing well in spots, and the uh, farmer wants to know what's going on. And so one of the things that I, uh, I depend on Mike to do is do kind of the pre-call planning is give me the background in detail because I come out as a support role with some technical expertise, hopefully, and uh, then we kind of see. So Mike, give me some background on, on this cornfield. When it was planted and... Yeah, this field was planted uh, April 27th. Uh, it's a 100-day variety. Um, it was planted into great conditions with about 200 pounds of pre-plant N applied. And about a week ago, I got a phone call to come and look at a yellow spot in this cornfield. Yeah, so these yellow spots, uh, corn's always great for showing us lots of symptomology, and very seldom do you get a textbook picture to say, well, it's this or it's that. It's sometimes multiple deficiencies. So I can see a lot of striping on corn, which could mean zinc, it could be manganese, it could be magnesium, and certainly could be sulfur. And but one of the things that's concerning me here is it could also be pH, and you've taken a soil sample here and sent it to the lab. That's right. And we've had other areas where we've had some low pH issues in this in this neighborhood. That's right. Yeah, a lot below five sometimes. Yeah, I saw some last year that was below five, and the symptoms looked quite similar. Yeah, so the only way to confirm that is with the soil test. We're going to wait for that to come back. There's not a lot, in my opinion, that we can do in this small area, not a lot of leaf surface for a foliar feeding, so it's the learning opportunity and setting up for next year in this location. A lot of interesting, other interesting things going on in this field. One thing I noticed is uh, we got some very shallow planted uh, corn, less than an inch deep in a lot of cases. And I've always said for the last 40 years, nothing good ever comes from shallow planted corn. And it gets a little more interesting as we go down the field, we see some other symptomology that is related somewhat to planting depth and root development. So we're a couple hundred feet down the field now. Corn looks much better. We're in a slightly different soil texture, a little more loamy, a little higher organic matter, a little lower slope position. But we still have some issues on the corn. And, and Mike, what do you see here in terms of plant to plant? Well, there's a lot of uneven plants. Uh not the most uniform spacing either. But we got a lot of different stages. We've got some plants that have come much later, um, plants that are you know two or three inches shorter. So we have some uneven emergence in here. And this goes back to the shallow seeded comment I made it earlier, is that really contributes to uneven emergence, some seeds in moisture, some not. But what we're really concerned with here is, is sulfur deficiency that we're seeing. Uh, it's more widespread than ever. Um, the sandy soils are the ones that tend to show it first. It's been progressing over the years, and this is a year we're seeing it pretty widespread. And that's that stripiness on the corn, pale green, uh, more pale in the upper part of the plant and more stripe in the new growth. So it's a little different than nitrogen, but it is related to nitrogen because nitrogen and sulfur work together in the plant and if you're sulfur deficient, you're not going to use that 200 pounds of nitrogen you put on. So we're a little bit concerned here from a couple standpoints is an unprotected nitrogen source on in mid-April, lots of rain, some cool weather. Um, we've got some situations here where I think we're going to start to run out of some nitrogen and certainly the sulfur is going to limit the nitrogen uh, efficiency anyway. So between uh, the sulfur supply, you have to talk in terms of uh, total supply. We're not getting it out of the atmosphere anymore. So the rain's been cleaned up, the emitters are, uh, industrial emitters have cleaned up their, their stacks and they've taken sulfur out of diesel fuel. So we don't have sulfur in the air anymore coming down the rain. So that's why we're contributing. We're only getting maybe enough sulfur to barely cover crop uptake. And secondly, it's root development. And when you have poor root development, you're not gonna get the sulfur taken up. And secondly, and thirdly, it's where's the sulfur? Top two to four inches is pretty deficient in most years. And when you take a soil test, sometimes the soil test doesn't tell you what you want to know because it picks up sulfur that's deeper down in the profile. So right now we've got a situation here where we're concerned about sulfur. Uh, crop doesn't appear to be uh, growing out of it very quickly. It might over time, but I know one thing for sure. Uh, we know how to fix the sulfur problem. I can't fix the seeding depth, I can't fix weather, but I know we can fix the sulfur supply. And likely we were looking at an application here of ammonium sulfate over the top of this corn to add a little N and certainly add the sulfur and improve the, the growth situation here and increase the yield potential. The final point here is in Ontario, we've been pretty good at talking about NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, 
But as sulfur starts to uh, increase in its uh, in incidence and severity, we're going to have to really start talking about NPKs as the four primary nutrients. That's going to be somewhat new for us, but it's getting to be widespread, not just in corn, but alfalfa, and certainly we've saw it first in our wheat, and certainly canola is another one, and we're going to see it progress through more acres uh, and on different soil textures as time goes on. So we really got to get into that NPKs mindset as we go forward.